Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you happen to be in the entire world, we are saying hello to you. We're giving you shouts out, shout outs rather. Much respect and honor. It's good to have you all on the show. Welcome to Think Tactical, where we think, act, we live, we exist in a yellow state of awareness, thinking at all times about how to protect our families and keep everyone safe. And my co-host with me today are Coach Myron Petro and Stingray the Eclipse, Bob Coleman. What's up, guys? Good morning. Good morning, John. What's up, Myron? How are we doing today? We are trying to keep hope alive. That's all we have. <laughs> We're doing great. And, uh, I don't think it's that bad, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's uh, always a, a trying thing, you know, but we're, we're, you know, life is so good. I, I prefer this side other than the eternal dirt map. What do you, uh, dirt nap, what do you guys think? Any day on this side of the sod can't be all bad. Yeah, it's always better to look at the grass from the top than the roots. Oh, amen. So um, we're going to talk about some interesting things today, I think. Uh, first of all, we would like to thank everybody for tuning in to Think Tactical, our podcast. And we want to let you know the Think Tactical YouTube site is up. Hey! Hey! And uh, you just go to Think Tactical on YouTube, and you will see our first video up there done with uh, Coach uh, Petro and myself. And um, Bob will be in our, our next one that we'll be shooting tomorrow. And you guys should just expect some really cool things. So go to the Think Tactical YouTube page, Think Tactical. Look up our YouTube. There's a lot of stuff you can find under Think Tactical. But you will find uh, there are no YouTube channels called Think Tactical. There's all kind of YouTube videos up there. And so you might have to scroll down to find us. But you will find us. Eventually we'll be at the top of the search. But right now, since we've just got it started and we just have just one video uh, you might have to scroll down to find us inside the uh, Think Tactical search ribbon. But you will scroll down and you will find the only Think Tactical YouTube channel, I believe. And look us up and you will you will know it's us because we have the, um, the uh, gun site with the Think Tactical logo. That's us. And we uh, hope you go over there and check out our first podcast. Or not podcast, but our first um, video. And we have another one that we're going to be doing tomorrow uh, on bug out bags. We're going to be looking at all of our bug out bags. All three of us uh, come from different areas and we have different things. A couple of us are married. One of us is not. We're going to all bring our bug out bags in and check them out together and see what we can learn and glean from one another's bug out bags. So I think that might be an interesting topic for you guys to check us out. I think tactical on our YouTube channel. Uh, I'd love to have you guys go check out the YouTube videos. Also, uh, our think tactical news.com site is up. So we have an online magazine called think tactical news.com and you will find all the things you would like to find about think tactical news situations where we have op-eds and we examine things that happen in the news like gunfights and shootouts and, uh, gun-free zones and all of these things that happen and, and what we think you could do to prepare yourself on a daily basis to survive Tiatwakwi when uh, things don't happen as we think they should or when things happen that are out of the ordinary, how people perish but how those who think tactical can and will survive. So we definitely appreciate you guys tuning in, and we hope that you check out our other properties at Think Tactical on our YouTube channel and thinktacticalnews.com. And, of course, this podcast, Think Tactical, which uh, we are trying to get to the point where we're putting out at least two of these things a week so that you guys can stay up to date uh, about your latest Think Tactical situations. So today's uh, discussion will be about escape and evasion and safety kinds of measures that you can take, uh, security zones that you can set up. And let me let me just draw the, 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 the let me just walk with me to the corner, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're, we're thinking about your, your outside of your comfort zone, your outside of your home, 
your security area, the area that you have set up for peace and happiness and shelter and the pursuit of happiness, and, of course, for your family. And that should be hardened to some extent, as if you guys have been listening to our um, our, our podcast so far. This, this is the fourth podcast. And we talked about the Jeff Cooper color codes, and we talked about uh, your levels of awareness. And so this is the area where if you were ever going to be uh, the color white, you would be white there. And you leave that area, and you're moving around. You're going to, like, uh, the piano concert or where you take your kids, dance class or school or the things that you do on a daily basis. And we tend to not really be so up on the game. We're driving there every day, and we're doing this and that every day, and we're not really thinking about necessarily being tactical, thinking tactical, and this is when we should be. Because it's times like this, if <clears throat> excuse me, if somebody were going to follow you, if somebody were going to kidnap you or, or take one of your kids or something like that happened to the uh, young girl, the, the Heidi Kloss girl, when, when, you, when you think about being out on your regular patrol, doing your regular thing uh, that is part of your everyday mundane life, this is when the predators are watching. This is when the lying is laying next to the path that goes down to the water hole to get the gazelle who walks down <laughs> to the water hole every day. And this is where they come from, on that path where we are just surviving and doing our day everyday existence. So you're out there, you're driving home from work, and you notice that there are some lights behind you because you are thinking tactical, and you notice that maybe you're being followed. And at some point, like I always say, if you think you're being followed or maybe maybe you're out doing Christmas shopping and some people have seen you spend a lot of money, they see the Rolex watch on your arm and the nice $50,000 diamond ring on your finger, and they feel like, oh, my goodness, here is a good place to get some spoils, and they're following you. But you've, you've been thinking about it. You've been listening to the show. You're thinking tactical, and you know that you're being followed or you suspect it. And one thing I always say is you can always do four turns, four right turns or four left turns. You don't do them all one in a row. You drive down a while, you make a turn. You drive down a couple blocks, you make a turn. You drive down a mile, you make a turn. After you've got four turns made, you have made a circle. And if that person is still behind you, you know you're being followed. Your condition changes to orange, and you know you've got to do something. You're not driving home. (coughs) You're not driving to the house. Maybe you're calling the house and telling the wife, hey, I'm being followed. Make sure that everything is secure and I'm getting ready to do something. Get the kids in the house. We don't know what's going on. Get the kids in the house. Make sure everything's secure. I feel like I'm being followed. And what do you do? Where do you go? So we're going to talk to uh, our our brothers here. And uh, we've had... uh, uh, Stingray Bob here has put together a lot of notes on this, and he's come up with some ideas on how we protect ourselves. So, Bob, to you. We're in this condition. We're being followed. And what are some of the things maybe we should be thinking about, or what are some of the things we should do? Well, first of all, um, long before you get in this situation, you need to do a little bit of research in your locality or your uh, routes that you spoke of on your daily routine and uh, find out where your local police or sheriff department stations and precincts are located. Where are they? How do you access them? What are their access points from from the road? Maybe one, maybe more than one. Go visit them. Go check them out. Walk inside. They're not going to arrest you for going inside the police department and just checking it out. Find out how you get access quickly to a police officer if you need one. Uh, My local uh, vicinity, we have basically only three police stations. We've got a north, Main, downtown, and the south. But I know where all three of those are and how I get to them. And one of them is on is very close to my primary route to work. So I know exactly how to get in there and, and, and what to do once I get in there. One of the things uh, I want to ask is if, you're, um, if, you, if you go to a police station, for instance, uh, and, and you say you should be doing that ahead of time, you know, police stations are um, secured areas so when you when you 
I think it's important that you do more than just know where that police station is. What, what do you think about maybe going into it to make sure you know how to get in and out of it? Oh, yeah. You, I said that. You need to go inside, find out, you know, is there somebody out at, a, at a reception point? How do you get access to a police officer quickly? And the only way to know that is to go inside because they're usually not milling around outside. There's police cars out there, but the police officers are inside. So how do you get access to one quickly? And the only way to know that is to go inside to one of these places and check it out. They're not going to get upset about you doing this if you explain what you're doing. They probably think you're being smart about it. Yeah, I think that's interesting because last time I was in a police station, I noticed that they are hardened themselves. You can't, like, walk in the door of a lot of them and even even touch a person. You, They've got a big bulletproof screen and and uh, all sorts of things that you have to go through. you got to sign in before you can even see an officer. So theoretically, you could run inside a police station if somebody was chasing you and be killed in the lobby before anyone could even get to you. Isn't that kind of crazy? That is wild, but, yeah, they are hardened for, for a lot of reasons. But trust me, if, 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 if there's somebody there, like I said, usually there's somebody stationed, like you said, behind that window because they've got to be protected too. If, they're, if you're in trouble, there will be an officer out there with you quickly. If you tell them what's going on quickly, you tell them this, I'm being followed, I'm in fear for my life, they'll have, there'll somebody be out there in a hurry if they're worth their salt. And that's that's how you find out. Go talk to somebody. Go inside. Talk to them. Okay. Do this before. You know, don't wait till you know, it's a little late if, after you've gotten in a situation you were describing where you've done the turns and somebody's behind you. Now what do you do? If you haven't done this ahead of time, you don't really have a clue. You're going to have to whoop out your phone and try to figure this out. And that's going to distract you from what's going on. That's not a good time for that to be happening. Excellent. Go on. Well, there's other, uh, other than police stations, there are other safe locations, secure locations outside your home. Oh, you, 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 the other choices you have are fire departments are a good one. Uh, I know in my local area, there's usually a police officer at the fire department. There's always a car parked out front, uh, but it's also a good zone to, to run into there. Most fire departments, if they're county uh, or city run, they will have people there 24 hours a day. A lot of the volunteer departments do not. So get, get, your, get your homework done and go look around the area. Other places you can go are, are well-lit, uh, exposed areas, grocery stores, uh, big box uh, stores. They have a lot of merchandise and stuff. The one good thing they always have is they have security cameras all over the place. And a lot of times that was somebody just stalking you. Uh, if, if they're not intent on actually killing you, if you put them into a public area, they'll usually back off because they know there's well lit, there's other people in there, and they're on camera. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you're completely safe, but it, it's better than just driving around and possibly getting boxed into an area where you can't get out of. You know, Coach, that that's interesting to me. It reminds me of a story that happened to me. It was really kind of crazy. I was in Duluth, Georgia, and I was uh, driving one night, and uh, I've got a you know a, a, a truck, uh, 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 a, an SUV. And I was driving, and I needed to make a left-hand turn quickly because I, was, I wasn't paying attention, and I passed my store up. And as I was jumping over to the left-hand lane, there was a guy there with a truck, and he decided that he would speed up. You know how they do. He would speed up and not let me over. And his, his idea was that I guess he would intimidate me into driving forward through the light, and I'd miss my turn. And... I looked over into the guy's eyes, and I could just see this kind of, like, uh, attitude. Uh, and, you know, I'm like any other aggressive male. Uh, I have my level of testosterone like anyone else. And I'm thinking, you're in a big truck, I'm in a big truck. Um, so you're not going to tear up my truck. And <laughs> I <laughs> went on ahead and pulled over in front of him, and he had to slam on his brakes. And I, I slammed on my brakes to make my left hand turn real quick, so he really slammed on his brakes. So I kind of chuckled to myself, serves you right, and uh, and the, the whole road rage inc- incident was going on. And I pulled into uh, into the Kroger parking lot, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, I'm going to go get my stuff. This is over. And I look in my rearview mirror, and here this guy is on my bumper really, really, really tight. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, I really pissed this guy off. And um, I'm driving through the parking lot, 
I'm making left-hand turns and right-hand turns and driving up and down the aisles, and this guy is still behind me, raging he's so mad. And so now I reach down and I grab my personal protection and I put it on my lap, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, we got an issue here because this guy is, uh, the, the more I'm driving and evading him, the more, the angrier he's getting. So I I pulled into, uh, and so I made mistake number one. I allowed myself to be boxed in, and you just said that, boxed in. So, I I mean, I actually, I parked my car. My my thing was, okay, I'm not fixing to deal with this guy. I parked my car so that I could go into the store. And as I parked my car, I noticed that this guy pulled in behind me. He he pulled across, so I, I parked in forward, and he pulled his car across mine and stopped. And now I realize that I'm boxed in. You can't really drive over the pylons without tearing up the bottom of your car, you know, the parking curb. And you can't back out because you'll back out into him. Well, in a situation, and we talk about thinking past your paradigm because you can actually drive through his truck if you have to. You put the car in reverse and you slam on the gas and you tear everything up. And uh, if if I had seen him with a weapon or something like that, that's exactly what you do before he can get out of the car and get around to start sh- shooting at you. <laughs> you you destroy his vehicle if you have to. But the guy parked and blocked me in, so now I've allowed myself to be boxed in, and he jumps out of his truck. So I move to condition orange. And condition orange is you know you've got something going on, you're about to engage, but as Jeff Cooper said, you set a trigger. And my trigger was, if this guy clears his front hood, then it's time for me to take direct and decisive action. And so as the guy got out of his car and was coming around the front of his truck, I yelled at him, if you come any closer, I will drop you where you stand. And I meant that. Because at this point, I was now afraid for my life. Why would you box somebody in and try to come running at the front window of their car? And so um, this guy sees that, and he realizes I'm serious, and he realizes that uh, I'm about to to put one in him. And he yells, you've got a gun! And uh, I said, man, if you come any closer, you're going to find out. And he jumps back in his truck and pulls out and drives away. Now I'm mad at him. So now I'm following him because I want his license plate. I just, I'm just i sure he's got a gun, and I'm going to call the cops on him. And as I'm driving around to get his license plate, once he saw that I wrote his license plate down, he became enraged again. So I got his license plate, and I, 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 I turn off. And now I know this is childish, and this is all going on in the Kroger parking lot at 25 miles an hour, right? So, um... As uh, I pull off, now he's f- he follows me again. But this time it, it escalates because I know he knows I'm armed. And if he knows that I'm armed and he's still trying to follow me, then he wants a confrontation, and this confrontation can wind up deadly. And so I'm thinking to myself, how do I best make the best move for the protection of myself legally and for the protection of myself um, to, to get to some kind of cover to engage this guy. So as we're driving around the parking lot, I see a L.A. Fitness, and it's full of people, and there are lights on, and it's bright, and I pull directly to the front door with, my, with the front of my truck like I was going to drive into the, through the double glass doors. I pulled up that close, that fast, everybody's attention was garnered. I actually, when I slammed on my brakes, I put skid marks on the sidewalk. I drove all the way up onto the sidewalk and right to the front glass. I jumped out of my car. I had my protection in the holster. Uh, I ran to the front door. I opened up the door and I screamed in. There is a madman chasing me through the parking lot. He's trying to kill me and I'm afraid for my life. And then I turned to face what was coming to the door. And this guy was out of his truck by this time. When he heard me yell that, he knew it was on. So he got back, turned around, and walked back to his truck, 
and got in, and he drove away. He looked at me as if to say, Touche, you have just set me up to take me out. And um, that's not what was going on. I was trying to make sure that everybody could see and everybody knew and everybody could see this fool chasing me through the parking lot and jumping out of his car. Now, when the police arrived, because I had already called the police when I was rolling, when the police arrived, here this guy comes walking back up and because he had gotten away and he comes walking back up and he's got a Bible in his hand. And he's like, officer, this gentleman has a gun and he threatened my life and and I figured, okay, here we go. I'm the black dude here, and this guy is the white dude, and I'm going to have a problem. But the Duluth officer got so pissed off, he said, did you really, did you really block this man's truck in and get out of your car? Well, yes, sir, officer, I did. He said, you're lucky to be alive. I would have killed you. So the things you talk about, Myron, are very interesting. A well-lighted place and a plan. Pull your car in. Let it be seen if you've got to pull up through the driveway. If if something if it's bad enough and you had to actually drive through the glass doors, you have to be able to move out of your paradigm to protect your life. Exactly, Johnny. And the other thing, too, is like you said, you didn't think ahead and you let yourself get boxed in when you pulled into a spot. That's another thing to think about. You've got... You've got a couple thousand pound weapon at your disposal. That's the vehicle you're in. You might have to use it. Well, we don't think let I, yourself get trapped in. We think don't about that. Don't drive remi- behind a building. Right. And one of those things, don't drive behind a building that you don't know you can't get around, around the other way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Or down a street that, uh, if you're running down side streets, you want to try to stay towards main streets because you can get in a cul-de-sac or you can get in a dead-end situation. So you want to stay on main streets. Uh, if right. you feel like that's you're... another good point. Yes, exactly. Don't go into a subdivision where you might end up on a cul-de-sac and be trapped on a dead end. But even if you are trapped in a cul-de-sac, you got to think past your paradigms. And one of the paradigms you might be thinking is, I'm in a cul-de-sac, there's no way to get out. And maybe you drive through somebody's fence, their fenced-in backyard. You create enough noise and chaos that a person that's trying to do something hidden, they can't stay. they got to go. Um, I'm reminded of the Ramirez case in California where he chased a woman off the highway and uh, he kept slamming into her car. He wanted to get her to pull over and she refused to pull over. So he sped ahead of her down the on-ramp or the off-ramp and then jumped out of his car with the rifle. And you got to think about the paradigm like, you know, uh, Bob, when I think about this, like she sees the guy down on the bottom with a gun and she tries to drive past him instead of backing up and going on up the on ramp that she or up the off ramp that she came down so a lot of people think this is the off ramp i can't go back up it and now this is this is an emergency situation uh most cars their reverse gear is high torque and and will get you moving in a big hurry going backwards you do not have to go in the direction your car is facing you can get that car into the shoulder on most uh, most off ramps have a shoulder or emergency lane type situation for, for obvious reason. And uh, you can use that thing to go backwards up that ramp. And matter of fact, if there's, if there's cars behind you, that's a good thing. Get over in that shoulder and go up that thing backwards because you're going to put a whole lot of steel between you and your potential adversary. And if you can get back up that on ramp and get, get your car pointed down the road, get on down the road to the next exit and get off. He's going to have a harder time getting to you up there than, than if you went down into his, uh, you know, like like uh, kill zone. John referred to his kill zone or right. his shooting zone or, or if anywhere where he can get access to you. Get, you get near his car, he's going to box you off. He's going to cut you off the road. It's going to be a lot easier down at the bottom of the ramp than it is going to be at the top of the ramp back on that highway. But don't think that you've got to use that ramp. You can get on down the road and take the next ramp. So you're talking about going. You're talking about going the opposite way of traffic. Down. Oh no, no. I'm just yeah. talking about getting up to the top of the ramp and then going down, getting back on the road, going the correct way. Oh. You, it's too dangerous to go in against traffic on a highway, but it's not that bad going down, going against the traffic up a ramp. That's different. Or the other thing it does mm-hmm. is it, it it makes you stand out. Now suddenly you're creating a scene. People see somebody do that where they back up an on ramp. They, they immediately start thinking, hey, there's a drunk driver here, and they'll call the police and get the police coming out. 
Yeah, yeah police, police attention is a advantage. very good thing. Yes, very good thing. So you can think of criminals like roaches, and they don't like the light. You shine a light on a roach, you make a commotion, and the roach has got to get. He's got to find a corner to hide in and come back out later. And you want to commit, commit as uh, you want to create as much commotion, a, as much noise as possible uh, to bring a, a, a an awareness down to you and your situation. Even if they think you're the bad guy, and someone's calling the cops on you because they think that you're drunk. Later on, that gets sorted out. But you're not facing some kind of creep on a lonely, deserted street because you drove down past him into his kill zone. And in that Ramirez case, the uh, um, the uh, uh, killer, um, well, he killed the girl and, and uh, took her away, but he shot her as she tried to drive past him. And, you know, you keep wondering, you know, you have to wonder why didn't she just drive back up the up ramp, uh, back up the off ramp. But a lot of times people's paradigms block them in. You pull into a cul-de-sac, there's no way out except to go back past the guy that's trying to kill me. No, you can drive uh, across everybody's lawn uh, speeding and, and tearing up as much sod as you can and creating as much noise as you can. And that brings uh, street that brings porch lights on and people trying to figure out what the hell's going on and folks immediately calling the cops. So thinking past your paradigms, your, your boxes that, that your, your mind puts you in, I can't go up the off-ramp, I can't uh, get out of the cul-de-sac, I can't uh, drive over the pylons. Like Myron said, I got myself boxed in, but one of the things I could have done was driven over the curb if I had to or put the car in reverse and absolutely, like like Bob says, high torque. Uh, your car will move a vehicle in reverse, especially if you slam on the gas and and uh, and you and you back into it. And if a car is right behind you and the front of it is behind you, you stand a good chance of uh, destroying the radiator and no car can follow you long with a busted radiator. Exactly. Okay. And if, you, if you drove over the curb, you could have torn up enough of your car that you could have disabled yourself. So backing into the guy would have been a better advantage. Because now if you're disabled, you can't escape. Exactly. Bob, what were you saying? Oh, I was just going to say, and if you, not only when you tear up his radiator, but if you, if you hit him in his front bumper hard enough, his, his airbag is going to blow. Ah. <laughs> so he, he won't have, he a have point. Point. he'll have poor visibility at that point. Uh, he uh, will have a, a, an avenue of escape or an opportunity to escape as he getting over the shock of having that thing blow in his face. And, and I've heard that once these airbags blow, like you are you are out of it for a minute. Like they can, th- there's enough force behind them that it's it's like almost like an instant concussion or something. Well, it's not really a concussion, but yeah, he's, you're going to have a, a several uh, 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 a moment of uh, of. Uh, confusion through which you can uh, uh, affect an escape after that airbag blows because yeah most people that, that the shock of that thing blowing is going to disorient it doesn't really give you a, a brain concussion but it will disorient you for several seconds and maybe even as much as 30 seconds while you, and that gives you a lot of time to get away especially in a vehicle yeah, they, they, they stink too I oh they to reach the high heaven <laughs> yeah and that, uh, and that they, white they, powder goes everywhere oh uh, you can't it takes you two three days to get rid of that smell oh yeah so uh, what's what's next, Myron? Uh, uh, well lit places and things like that. What else? Well, mostly the, the well lit public places is your is your best bet. Uh, you don't want to take them home. You don't want to try to drive to your house because now they have, now they will have your address and it, they're at an advantage. Myron, you're breaking so you, up. I don't know what's going on. So say that again. Uh, move your phone profile or whatever and uh, try that again. What were you saying? Okay. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. The, uh, what I was saying was the one thing you don't want to do is drive home. That's the last thing you want to do. Because now the, the person following you has your home address. And it puts them at a big advantage because now you've got to be in condition orange all the time. Right. So you want to go somewhere else, somewhere that's public. Uh, the other thing is if you have kids in the car, that could change your tactics also. If your children are in the car, you don't want to leave the car. Even if you want to try to attract attention some other way. You pull in front of a, a, a big box store or well-lit grocery store area, get on your horn. Get them to come out to you. Because yeah, hit that panic button on your key fob. Set that alarm off. Yes, if you have one. If not, 
get on your horn. Get on the horn. Yeah. Start getting on your horn, and, and, and don't just stay on it. Move, uh, turn it on and off a few times. Beep it multiple times. Get attention. Because you, it, with your kids in the car, your tactics have to change. You can't just run into a store yourself because now you're leaving your kids. And the kids are going to slow you down getting in there, which could give this guy a chance to grab one of you. So you, you, you have to think ahead. You have to start thinking, what can I do? What do I do? How do I get attention? Uh, like Bob said, the alarm and key fob. A lot of people don't look at an alarm. But if, if they see you panicking and going crazy, you'll get attention. Somebody will get, will get attention, and they'll, they'll see and call the police. Of course, if you're on your cell phone, you should, be already, you should have already dialed them. Right, you go to a store, you go to these big stores, they have security. A lot of times their security is not visible because they're looking for shoplifters, but there is security there. Yeah, you got to don't worry about being embarrassed. Don't worry about, you know, what people think. This is you're protecting yourself and your children and your family from a potential dangerous situation. So that's that's got to be your primary focus. As, as uh, John said earlier, you got to get outside your paradigm and think tactically and think, that this is a, a, a emergency situation. You got to think this is an emergency. I'm protecting myself and my children, and think of it that way. Not think about the, you know, what people are going to think afterwards. Even if the guy leaves or whatever the, the the situation is, if it gets resolved as a result of this, great. That's a wonderful thing. People aren't going to think you. You know, even if they think you're crazy, fine. Let them think that you're safe. That's what matters. That's what your focus has to be. So, and, and, and John, in your case, that guy knew. Yeah. That he had, that you had gotten his his license number. Right. That you were now going to be talking to the police. He came up with an alternate plan that that almost made him sound good until, until you know, he realized, the cop realized how much he actually did wrong. And that's probably the only reason the guy didn't go to jail, but it made him think twice again about trying to do that to somebody else. I think it probably did. Um, so we. Um, John, can you hear me? Hello? Can you guys hear me? John? I think we lost John. Oh, no. crap. How could we lose him? He's a, he's a conference. No, I'm here. You guys can't hear me? No, we no, lost we couldn't you. hear you. You hear me now, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, we're, we still, we're still working things out, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few bugs, and uh, we're working on them. <laughs> we're... we're we're uh, we're not quite there yet. We're still working things out. We're not Neil Bortz yet. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Uh, and even Neil Bortz has it at his time where his call screen board went haywire. So technology is a wonderful thing until it's not. So we're uh, so we're talking about how we move around in public, how we move around from the places that we go to normally, how we move around from spot to spot, and. In case we run into something, in this case, an escape and evasion, maybe someone's trying to follow us, try, trying to tell us, maybe someone's trying to take our Christmas presents, or maybe some creep has eyeballed one of our children and has decided that he wants to move on one of our children and take them from us, or whatever the case these rotten-minded people come up with to become predators of us who are minding our business obeying the laws and trying to do great things uh, in our families and in our communities. These creepy predators prey on us. And one of the things that they try to do is get us when we're not situationally aware. And we haven't planned for these things that they wish to befall us. So it doesn't hurt to have places that you know you can peel off and escape to on the your normal commutes especially when you have places of, of great distance where you have nothing uh, in between, no place to go, or you have dead phone zones that people uh, are aware of and exploit. You can plan your way around these things if, if, um, if you know that these are things you're going to have to face. You can kind of plan your way around these kind of things. So um, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about how to, how to protect yourself and... and um, and how to uh to to make things happen uh that will that will that will that that will keep you alive 
and keep you tactically and situationally aware. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we went over those things. Uh, first of all, uh, Bob talked about how to plan ahead so that you have places that you know to go and not just to spot places out. I mean, it's really great to know where the fire department is, uh, but if you don't know how to get into it or it's completely locked up or there's no way to, 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 to access it, then driving to an emergency won't do you any good. So not only do you find out where these places are, but you actually go into them and see like uh, what you would have to do if you really had to utilize one of them. And then Myron talked about some places to go to and some things to do once you're in the situation and you've moved to Condition Orange and you realize that you have to, um, uh, you, there is a problem and you have to make things happen. So, and then I wanted to talk to you about changing your paradigm and actually uh, some things, some routes of escape, like uh, one of the things that you have to be aware of when, when trying to escape and routes of escape is you don't want to drive off into um, subdivisions and things like that, roads you don't know. You don't want to let your paradigm set you up to where you can't think past, okay, I'm in a cul-de-sac, what do I do now? You want to get loud, you want to get noisy, you want to maybe run into cars. I mean, if you're truly being pursued, truly being attacked, truly being an, a kidnap attempt on you, then there, I- there is no boundary. You have to do everything it takes to stay alive. Everything it takes to not be moved to that secondary crime scene. Everything it takes to survive. And that's making noise. That's knowing where to go. That's hardening yourself. That's having your personal protection available. Whatever it takes. Whatever part of that you do. Like some people don't carry weapons. That's just not their thing. But a weapon it can also be your voice, your siren, your, your, your actions, your maneuvers. You can do all kinds of things to keep yourself together but mostly you have to think about it in advance so we'd like to thank you guys for tuning in uh, uh one more thing bob oh. don't you have uh, some stuff about some apps that people can put on their phones oh yeah oh yeah well i think i thought i put the information up on the website but yeah there's a bunch of uh, personal safety apps that you can uh, get on your phone to help uh with situations like this uh like i said i'll put that information up on the website everybody can access it there ThinkTacticalNews.com, people. ThinkTacticalNews.com. Uh, you will be able to see these phone apps that uh, Bob was going to tell us about. We're kind of short of time. So the phone apps are these apps that, uh, Bob, what do the phone apps do? Uh, well, several things they do is you, you can set them up to alert friends when you arrive at destinations. Only the friends you pick, not your contact list. Uh, it uses the phone's location, GPS. It has panic button features that you can activate manually. Or you can set them up on a timer where they'll activate automatically if you don't check in there. Uh, frequently enough it captures the gps location and will start recording video to be used later if necessary also transmits an sos message to those friends if you hit this panic button that's just one of the apps i looked up that app is called be safe but there's literally that's, dozens of them that that you can go look up and, and find out for yourself which ones I, I, I see i see that app as being good if if you have kids that are driving going back to college or just going out and you know they're going over a friend's house that app can automatically let you know that, hey, they got there, so you don't have to deal with, the, oh, I forgot to call you, Dad. I forgot to call you, Mom. This way, you know they've got to their place safely. And you know when. That's, that's, a, that's a really good handy app. I wish I had that when my kids were younger. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of them that have come out. They're, they're mostly marketed toward women, but they shouldn't be thought that way. It could be used by anybody. But like I said, I'll put more information about these up on the website so you can go check them out. But there, there's several good ones out there. Most of them are free. Some of them are, have minimal cost. And I'm talking a buck ninety nine. That's a cheap price for personal safety. So, yeah. Uh, all right, outstanding. So this this is what we've covered today in just about forty minutes, and that's really great to have you guys. Remember, thinktacticalnews dot com is our website. Think Tactical is our podcast, and Think Tactical is our YouTube channel. So we ask that you guys tune in and continue to follow us and continue to follow along. And send us your suggestions. Let us know um, what what uh, you think about what we're doing and leave your comments on so we can kind of cover the things you guys want to talk about. And we absolutely uh, appreciate your time, and uh, we hope to be doing a good service for you. As always, we ask that you protect yourselves, be well, pursue your happiness, and have a great time and do big things in life. But as always, make sure to think tactical.